Hello everyone, this is Mike from Windows 7 Forums. In this video, I will discuss with you the power of the library feature in Windows 7, the configuration of indexing options, and the ability to back up your files at any time on the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud with a free product known as Dropbox. These options go hand in hand, and I will discuss with you how they work. First, let's check out libraries. To access libraries, we go to computer. When we go to computer, we get a better understanding that libraries now exist in Windows 7 under the libraries listing. Fair enough to understand, but how can we create custom libraries and how can we use libraries to our full advantage? As you can see, I have already created a custom library called Downloads, and I will show you how to create an additional one. But first, let's look at the existing custom library. This custom library called Downloads exists because there is no library called Downloads uh, in the, in the uh, official release of Windows. So I create a library by right-clicking on Libraries and going to New and going to Library. What I did, if you go to uh, my Downloads properties here, is I linked uh, downloads in my user profile, so C users Mike, and downloads in my documents. So I can access both, and anytime I download something, I can simply go to libraries and go to downloads and view them from there. Um, to create a custom library, let's take a look. We go to new, we go to library, and we can type in whatever we want. In this case, uh, let's call it Dropbox. And in this case, and in this scenario, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We can link to our Dropbox folder, which exists within Documents. And there's my Dropbox right there, and we go to Include Folder. Now, whenever I go to the Libraries pane, I will find my Dropbox files. Second, let's take a look here at the indexing options. And to access indexing options, we go to the Start menu, we click on the Start Orb, and we type in Indexing Options. The Windows Search Index determines what you pull up whenever you conduct a search through the Start menu by clicking on the Start Orb. By now you have been using Windows 7 and Windows Vista for a while. You will probably be acclimated with this feature and probably use it quite often. Yet not all files are stored in the Search Index and for good reason. If all files were stored in the Search Index, it would take up a huge amount, enormous amount of input and output disk I.O. Uh, for the index to stay fresh, it would probably also result in a faulty index. So we, we will look at ways not only to optimize, configure, and use indexing options, but also ways to reset the Windows Search Index if your computer is running slow. As you can see, we have a number of folders here that are indexed automatically. These are all folders under the Users pane, so anything in your documents, any videos, pictures, uh, etc. that you have will be indexed. Any application data is excluded which is a smart move and we can go to modify and take a look at what's going on here and you can see that sticky notes uh, offline files which would be for Windows Server uh, SharePoint Workspace Outlook OneNote uh, the C drive is not indexed for good reason and Internet Explorer history is also indexed uh, when we go to start menu well, we know that the Start menu is indexed by automatically, and Office uh, tools are also indexed. But just say we wanted to index a custom folder, we could do that. We would go to Modify. We would see the existing stuff we have. We would go to Advanced, and we could choose to index encrypted files. Uh, we could determine how in some cases the index works and we can look at file types but to truly add a new folder we go to modify we go to C 
and we can choose what folder we want to index simply by clicking on it and pressing OK. This will then index that folder. You'll be able to search on it using the start menu. Now, there may be some things you don't want to index. For example, example, if you have Microsoft Office but you don't use SharePoint Workspace, you can go to Modify and you can remove SharePoint Workspace from the index. You can remove OneNote, you could remove Outlook if you don't want to index emails or if you don't use Outlook, and you could even remove Internet Explorer History. You could remove sticky notes, especially offline files for the most part, and sticky notes if you don't really use it that much and you can hit OK and you can go to close. Now you may wonder, well now that I've removed these things what do I do? Well under indexing options we want to do one more thing. We want to go to advanced and this is especially if your computer is very slow to boot sometimes it's due to an indexing issue. So you can go to rebuild the index, delete and rebuild it. You'll get a warning that rebuilding the index might take a long time to complete some views and search results might be incomplete until the rebuild is finished. You can go to OK. And at that point, the index, the search index is now being rebuilt from scratch. Uh, there may be no indication that that's happening, so you should keep your computer online for a little while. But for the most part, yes, it's being rebuilt. And there you have it with search indexing. Now let's move on to Dropbox. We will take a look at a software application called Dropbox. Dropbox provides free storage space of up to 2 gigabytes at no cost. Dropbox creates a folder, usually within My Documents or wherever you tell it to, and anything you place in that folder is 1. Backed up for all time, 2. Synchronized between any computers where you install Dropbox, and three, accessible whenever you log into Dropbox from the web. The reason why I, dro I recommend Dropbox is because it has many uses, both in academia, business on the go, and home use. It is clear that Dropbox is a good idea for those of you who need data protection. The two gigabytes of free space provided by Dropbox is equivalent to a free USB flash drive that will never die, is completely portable, and will always be with you. Furthermore, Dropbox solicits no advertisements when you use the software and collects no personal data about you when you use the software. I will show you how to find Dropbox, where it is, and exactly how to get to it. First, we will go to our web browser and we will type in dropbox.com. Now we can see that we have the website Dropbox and in order to download Dropbox we simply click here and the installation instructions on how to uh, install Dropbox are featured here the installation is very simple very very simple and I've already installed Dropbox on this machine I've had it for quite a while and I'll show you that you can actually log in to Dropbox if we go to dropbox.com again I'm sorry and I'll log in with my information. Yes. So here we have all of our files that we may want to download from uh, the Dropbox uh, online utility. But not only that, not only that, when we go to Documents, uh, actually we can go to Mike, and remember we created the Dropbox library we see that these are all synchronized files. If I create a new file, and let's make it just a, uh, uh, well, we can make it a Word document for now, and call it test. This is automatically updated, and you saw the synchronization, automatically updated to the Dropbox servers. It's accessible online, and uh, it's usable from that location, any location where you install Dropbox, any computer where you install Dropbox. And this information is secured using similar technology that banking uh, companies use. And it's a pretty good way of backing up your stuff, basically. So when we consider all the elements of this video, that includes libraries, indexing options, Windows Search, and Dropbox, we can see better ways to manage our files on our system, we can see better ways to manage the search features, the search index, and also ways to back up our files that are free, appropriate, and highly secure. Thanks for watching this video. Visit Windows7Forums.com for further information on libraries, search indexing options, and the software application called Dropbox. Thanks for visiting.